Good morning, everybody. So welcome to TLD Cast. Um, today is a really special day for us. Um, I see that Kara was in the chat for a second, but we are continuing with the concept that came, uh, Kara came up with a little while ago, which is sort of a breakout from TLDC, which is we are doing women in learning and development. So welcome, because we are taking a concept that she started. We're going to do this more often. Um, we're still finessing our concepts behind this, our cadence and how we'll do this, but we really want to start to talk about women in learning and development. Um, so just so you guys know, we kind of came up with a little acronym, W-I-L-D. Like, Woo! Woo! <laughs> we are walking. So um, if any of you are new to TLD Cast, good morning and welcome. Please, please join us as much as you can. TLD has gone wild. Yep, we have gone awesome. wild. We have. <laughs> So uh, we, have, we have a couple of special guests today, so I'm actually going to be your moderator. Um, and we have Dr. Stella Lee, and I think we lost her video for a second, so she may have to just kind of come back in again. We may have her on audio, but not on video. Um, oh. So she may need to, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, Dr. Stella, if you can hear me, you can probably log back in. I still see that you're there, so um, can you hear me? I see myself. <laughs> okay. You want to you want to log back in and come back in and I'll invite you back onto the screen. So, okay. go ahead and log back out and come back in again. So sometimes we have those things happen. I will do that. Okay, perfect. So today, and and I will be your moderator. So we have Valerie, and let me make sure I'm saying this right. Sunyak, is that right? Is that how you exactly, say your name? I probably should have mentioned it before we went live, but it's actually pronounced Sunyak. So exactly Sunyak. as it's spelled. S U N Y A K. Okay. okay. That's Very my cool. Hungarian heritage. Awesome. Okay. So today we will have Valerie doing the interview with Dr. Stella Lee. We're excited to have uh, Stella come back because I know she's been on before. Um, we actually did have a little bit of problem last time with some of the video feeds, so we're hoping everybody cross your fingers for us that it will work well today. Um, technology sometimes is not our friend, as we know, um, but it happens. Sometimes, <laughs> yeah, as Jonathan says, sometimes Crowdcast does that. I think every platform does that. Trust me, get that in my, my daily business. So I want to introduce you a little bit to the topic we're talking about today, and this is a really interesting thing. So yesterday, we just talked about last night when we were talking to uh, Bethany just said on the imposter syndrome with women. And so that's actually something we're going to talk about today. Um, the, we've talked in the past about the imposter syndrome, but we'll talk a little bit more about it today. So, and it's just absolutely fascinating to me that this is exactly one year past the last time we really talked about this in the cast. So, so far, so good. Oh, okay, hang on. There's that. Um, Nothing so far. Okay. She has no yeah, sound she, or audio. Okay. Okay. Oh dear, hang on. I'm gonna try it again here. Goodness, okay. All right. Let me send her a note really quick. I'm pretty sure she's on Chrome, but we'll try it and we'll ask a question. So while you're kind of working through that, so we have the <laughs> silence here, I'm just kind of sitting here looking at the um, chat. Maybe I can introduce myself and just tell you a little bit about um, me. So, um, yeah. yes, so I've been in the field of learning and development, I don't know, all my life, I feel like, in some way or other, um, but probably about a little over 18 years. And I don't know about um, the people who've joined, but I call myself a learning and development Swiss Army knife which means I'm, some <laughs> days that. I'm the saw and some days I'm the scissors. <laughs> so it seems I like it. I, I'm doing a little bit of everything. So I've done instructional design, I've done you know, program management, project management. Um, and like many of us, I talked about this on one of the previous uh, TLD casts, I kind of fell into it. I think most of mm -hmm. us find ourselves kind of falling into this. Um, and we may have kind of um, an, some innate kind of skills um, which I found I had. So right now I'm going through kind of another um, transition in my um, career. I'm doing, starting to do coaching. So I'm adding that to my skill. I've said I've been right. doing that kind of 
again, I feel like I've always been doing it, but I'm adding, making it more official now. So Very I'm adding cool. that to my Swiss Army knife. Um, Very cool. I love that term. So, that is so awesome. I, and yeah, I that's kind of my kind of strong for sure. My elevators so. is I'm a Swiss Army knife. I think you nice. should use the SEO logo. <laughs> no, yeah, well, thank absolutely. you. Maybe I will. I like, but I, I like, feel I like that. I love it. I, yeah. I mean, so, <laughs> yeah. Glad to have you back, Stella. So I was filling some of the space, just kind of introducing myself. Oh, so. I, I don't think you're filling up space. I think people yeah. want to get to know you as much. Um, can you guys see me okay? Can you see me yes. okay now? Okay, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I honestly don't know what happened there. Just uh, no. Okay, we're just going to cross our fingers. That oh, my gosh, Jonathan. We need <laughs> more of Jonathan. He's like, you look great. He's funny. I know. He's I was funny. like. Oh, uh, we met the video. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, whoa. I love it. So, um, just to, to introduce you to, so Valerie gave us a little bit of a, a history of herself. So, in Dr. Stella Lee, she is a PhD with in computer science, right? Yes. Is that correct? I, yes, I can't uh, even please, 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 just, just Stella. <laughs> just. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> okay. So, you have a PhD in computer science. You are the director of Paradox Learning. And you are an LMS uh, guru, from what I understand. So I have to pick your brain more, more about that. Uh, I'm love to talk it. about LMS all okay. day long. <laughs> yeah, we, and, and I always tell people I love to talk about learning. I can be such a learning geek, so it's all good. So we'll go ahead and get started, because we really want to learn more about, you know, first of all, I mean, welcome again to WILD, Women in Learning and Development. Um, but our, our entire topic today is going to be talking about the imposter syndrome. And so um, because Valerie invited you on as a guest, I'm going to let her do the interview and I'm going to shut up. Well, uh, I hope you add some things and I hope that the <laughs> chat, um, the chat to um, please, you know, um, speak yes, up so we can kind of add that yes. in because I want everybody yeah. to really get into the discussion. And I just yeah. think this is such a good thing because it's, there's a lot of things we don't talk about. And um, sure. we think we're the only ones. I, I don't know. Right. That happens to me a lot. I'm the only one who goes through this. And um, through our talk today, you'll probably find out you aren't. So, right. um, so I and think so we have the, some questions that we yeah, can vote up to. So be sure to and, ask your questions, guys. I did want to mention this now um, while I still have it in my mind. We do have a Slack channel. And I mm -hmm. think it's a great um, usage of the Slack channel is after today's conversation, go into the Slack channel and continue with this conversation. Um, the Slack channel has mm -hmm. been a little slow. We're trying to get it kind of moving and get more talk and discussion. And I think these right now we're having a monthly, these monthly um, wild uh, webcasts are a good opportunity to continue that discussion. So, um, yeah. so I think we're really to kind of frame our conversation um, I kind of wanted to start by asking you, really, what is imposter syndrome? Because not all of us really know, you know, what is it? Where does it come from? Yeah. Um, so, I, I mean, I, I think you um, hit the nail on the head there, Valerie. I, I think um, sometimes we feel like um, we're the only one that 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 feel like we 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 don't belong, right? Um, actually. Um, Imposter syndrome came about in around 1978. It was the, the term was coined by two female psychologists who wanted to study specifically this this feeling of of not belonging or um, of, of faking it. Um, you know, especially among you know very capable people. Like this is this is not an actual. Um, it's not a fact like you feel that this way but in in reality you you are accomplished and you're capable um and and they wanted to know why people um had, had this problem of suffering from from that um initially they they study female but then they quickly realized this is not something that you know happened only to women i recently i've uh, attended a workshop back, actually about imposter syndrome by a tech um um, woman maker, right? So it's a woman specific event. Um, and, and it was over like 100 people attended. And that that's quite a huge turnout. I, I'm based in uh, Vancouver, Canada, it's, it's not a big city. Um, and when it's, when it's sunny, nobody comes to anything. <laughs> so um, same so way here in Seattle, same yeah, way. <laughs> It, it's shocking. It was a sunny, perfectly sunny day. And in the evening, people all show up. Um, and the organizer was like, initially, 
um, this is a event I intended for women, but other groups start asking me to come uh, if they can come like men. So there were a lot of men, uh, minority groups, I think, um, and any marginalized um, community. So um, a lot of black community came out, a lot of uh, LGBTQ community came out, um, mm -hmm. people that felt like they're maybe new new immigrants that they, they, they don't feel like they quite belong also came out. So it, it was the most honest and open discussion that I've ever had. So I think um, I think this is something that everybody can relate to. I, well, yeah, I should it's, say, it's kind of just you know, opening the box, you know, everything's yeah. kind of in the box and you open the box. And some of the things you were talking about and I kind of that stuck with me was the year 1978. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I've kind of been thinking through this before today um, about that. I wonder if a lot of at least if we kind of focus on women, it has to kind of do with the way women are. Um, responsibilities have changed yes. so much over the centuries, more so than than men um, and not to exclude men, because, as you said, it, it, this yeah. is it, the syndrome is across the board. But I wonder if a lot of it is that we have as women so many more expectations on us, so many more mm -hmm. responsibilities. So at work and outside of work. And I also call them minefields. We have minefields at work that we have to dodge. Um, and uh, you know, maybe Absolutely. you can tell me, yeah. talk about some of those minefields that we have to dodge every day that men might not even realize. You know. Yeah. Um, and I, I wanted to make sure that we bring the conversation in from the, the chat box here. Somebody mentioned uh, the biggest impact. Uh, who was this? Let me just scroll up. Uh, Le uh, Lita. She was saying uh, the biggest impact, it's, uh, it's money, right? Um, negotiation for me. I, I think it's, it's, it's okay if you, you know, like, it's fine. You feel like you're an imposter. You don't belong. That, that's, that's a feeling. But I think when that feeling, it's impacting the way you work, it's impacting the way you your productivity, it's impacting the way you go about um, presenting yourself, you know, negotiating your worth. I, I think those are those are real issues. And um, and how do we mitigate that, right? Um, talking about responsibility and how, how that impact us, I think, um, and I think we chatted about that yesterday. Um, when we are encouraged to speak up, because one of the problem for women at workplace is that we don't speak up enough we don't we don't present our ideas we don't um we don't stand up for us um but when we do mentioned that and um we were having a conversation about this women it's almost conditioning we say we're sorry for yes we bump into a chair and we say i'm sorry <laughs> It's, the chair. I mean, and, and I <laughs> see this across the board, all ages of women. I see a lot of young yeah. women, you know, sorry, everything. So it's almost like um, we don't, money is power, and yes. we don't feel mm -hmm. that we that, can do that with power, you know, and the whole sorry thing. Sorry to, inter sorry to interrupt yeah, you. See, I did that again. <laughs> and and, you know, and, and I, think, I think there's a research on, um, like, um, uh, the, the uh, power or or your um, status or you know the high up you go at work, um, for for women, um, you know they're more powerful. The the, the high up you at work, uh, the least you like, right? So likability, it's um, it's an inverse relationship or correlation um, for um, for power for women. As for men, it's a direct correlation, as in the more, more powerful a man is, the more they are perceived to be like, right? Likeability mm -hmm. and power, mm -hmm. it's a positive correlation for men, and it's negative correlation And that for women. starts when we're young. Um, yeah. When we were talking yeah. last night, I used the example of a workshop I was attending, and there, um, the woman who was facilitating the workshop was talking about um, a little girl who was constantly told, don't be bossy, because she was speaking up. You're so bossy. Don't be bossy. Don't be bossy. Mm -hmm. So again, there's that conditioning. And, and I'm curious if you found, Stella, if it's mm -hmm. cultural, um, is this across all cultures or is it? Um, I, I think I think it's across all cultures, but I think, uh, you, you know, if you're a marginalized group, I think you 
you feel it more. I, I think it's the matter of um, I, I don't belong, right? I, I think um, I, I come from a, a STEM background and, and there's not that many women in computer science. So that is a common conversation among women, but that doesn't have to be a woman specific. Um, and so, so I think it's more the subculture, more, more than culture. Um, I, I, I have not studied like a specific, you know, a specific culture and say, do they suffer imposter syndrome more than the other? Um, and somebody commented that the fact that we even call it imposter, it's already like a, a, a terrible term and it's yeah. already putting you in a negative frame of mind. Agree, I think, um, but I think it's important to recognize what it is. Um, I think by calling it a term, like calling it something, give us power. Because mm -hmm. like, think about it, mental health issues, like before um, depression was identified as mm -hmm. a, a mental health issue, people were like, what's wrong with me? Like, why can't I just pick myself up? Um, you know, I, I don't know, you can pinpoint exactly what it was, so you can't talk about it. And I think it's the same thing with imposter syndrome, like by giving it a name, we actually, are able to take charge and say, now I understand what that is. It's like naming and, your demons. You can't yeah, fight, exactly you can't yeah. fight your demons until you've named them. And then that fear, once you've kind of named it, then the fear kind of drops off a little yes. bit and you can work with it. And right, and right? I think um, the, the good thing is like, it, it's getting more uh, recognized as, as a problem. And, and I mean, the fact that we're here today talking about that, it's, mm -hmm it's a start, right? And and the fact that we understand this is not not something wrong with us, that right. that is it's not a real thing. Like it's it's not that we don't belong. We think we don't belong, right? I mean there's a difference. And the fact that we are here talking about it, sharing our experiences, that's a first step. Well you know, I was just thinking kind of bringing L and D, which is all of our profession, <laughs> kind of back into this. Yeah. Um, and kind of looking at L&D as a profession, um, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, we sometimes think, oh, L&D, warm, fuzzy, you know, kind of like HR. Uh, exactly. Kind of stuff. So I think that makes it <laughs> difficult, too, for us to really exert our um, influence and our power and those kind of things because of our profession. Yeah. Um, I, I think um, I can... in itself, that's another layer to add to that. For sure, I think I think that the problem is it's two folds, right? At first, it's within the L and D community. It, it it's not a regulated profession like accounting. Yeah, we've had that so, discussion. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So so it's not like like I think everybody in L and D is like I major in L and D at college. It's it's you know I, I rarely you know have have people that say that's my PhD. Oh, people I mean, in high school don't know. <laughs> I, you know, that that's what I want to do when I grow up. Yes. You know, people will say I exactly. want to be a fire so, person. So I think, or, yeah. I think everybody feel like they're slightly, um, you know, off because people come in from like such a diversity of background. People came in from, you know, be, having been like a high school teacher or, or people that came from HR or people came mm -hmm. like from a more tech background or they you know history majors and and i i think everybody's like well this is always and also with technology changing so much i think this is like a problem too with with mm -hmm. our field it's like i don't know about you guys but every day i wake up i'm like that's a, what a, a new platform i have not heard of there's like a new Everywhere. you know yeah. idea yes i mean even with just lms like not never mind like all the other lnd stuff I'm like, okay, let's let's look at like what is a learning engagement platform, and right. and is it different than a learning experience platform, and how is it different than an LMS? Like, and the definition keeps changing, right? Um, mm -hmm. So I I feel like sometimes like no matter how much you know, or at least I feel like no matter how much I know, it's like maybe I don't know enough, and 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 it's not you know like you have to keep keep that in check, but at the same time, what I do you like about it is it it keeps me learning right. it, yes it, i think you know. it's fair to say all of yeah. us are lifelong learners oh, yes. yes you know that's, that's, that's a part of being part of this <laughs> industry but and it was interesting i saw i think it was lisa had said in the chat box that yeah. somebody called them learning ladies and and you know i've heard this term before <laughs> and i don't mean to offend anybody by saying this but 
um, people sometimes used to call HR the pink ghetto. Oh, Ooh. wow. Yeah. I've never heard that I've heard before. That. Heard yeah. <laughs> yes. Which is horrible. Wow. I mean, yeah. so kind of those things. Yes. That's yeah. Oh, and everything. Yes. Yeah. And again, I don't mean to offend anybody by saying this, but these, I have to be honest, these are the things I've heard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this is the way mm -hmm. people talk. Yeah, well, so we well, before. That before too, um, and and that's and yeah. L and D was kind of attached to that. So, mm -hmm. what kind of um, message does that send to us, and and how yeah, can exactly. we overcome the imposter syndrome? We've got all these other things tangled up with it. Well, and also like at, across the organization, right? If you look at the organizational level, um, L and D, it's it's not always getting to sit at the table, and mm -hmm. that you know, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't make us feel like we belong. So I think there's a larger issue outside L&D. Like you were saying, the perception of, of, of people from other, you know, part of the organization, I think that's that's valid. And, and you know, that it's something we have started to, to talk about. That it's something we start to do something about. But Absolutely. I think it's taking us this long. Mm -hmm. to realize it and to think about, okay, how are we going to um, add value? How are we going to validate, you know, ourselves and what we do within the organization? And, um, yeah. and I think that's, uh, that's part of it too. It's, it's sort of, you know, it, it doesn't help to, to make us feel like we don't belong. Yeah. Do you think um, also that because we're, I feel like the, world of work is like this big giant sh Titanic that's kind of moving slowly, but it's taking a while. And we're moving from that very factory kind of mindset, the hierarchical mindset. And we're, we're, we still have a long ways to go that maybe a lot of this is attached kind of to that kind of hierarchical yes. um, system. Um, what, thoughts on that or anything um, you can comment I, on? I think somebody mentioned a really good point about um, a lot of people don't realize um, L&D, the core of it, we have to do change management. And I, I think that's, really, yeah, I think it's a really good point. Um, and, 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 you know, again, like change management is, it's kind of a relatively new concept and there's, you know, not a lot of standards or, methodologies around it. So it also, it's, it's another thing we, we have to kind of constantly struggle with. Like selling that to the organization is difficult too. Um, because we don't have that governing body. So it's really no. us to really be the influencers. Yeah. yeah and it would um, always like, you know, like, and I think the feel itself is changing, right? Yeah. So, so, so like now, okay, now it's change management. Now we also have to look at you know, technological disruption and, and, and also about, you know, talent development, the future of work. And the, there's so many things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's now interesting. The, I mean, I work, oh, oh, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, Go ahead. I work with a group. Um, we're very process oriented, but in my yeah. group, we actually take change management into consideration as part of our planning, which I'm, I'm actually really proud to say that we do that. I mean, I think that's a very forward thinking group. Um, I work with a group that's mainly women, um, which is which is a really awesome group. But we also have a woman president for our company. Um, so nice. I think that kind of changes the tone of, of how our organization functions. And so I'm, I'm proud to be part of a group that really does some forward thinking that way. That's but yeah, and it should always be part of it. And, it, you know, I, I mean, I, I deal with that at work sometimes, mm -hmm. too, or not even just at work, just in general. Um, people also, you know, feel uncomfortable if you're technical and, or if you, I mean, that that's like a perceived competition, right? Mm -hmm. And so they try to undermine you and say, oh, um, like I, yes, yesterday or the day before somebody actually like asked me, so how technical are you? And I'm like, I, I, I don't know how to answer that question. Like, what, what do you want me to say? I can the quantify that. And what? Like, <laughs> I mean, I'm what, 85%? Like, like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's funny. But, but, I think they just, it's almost like they don't believe it. They, they, they want, I, I feel like I'm always having to give more proof that I am, you know, like I, I, Beyond I I'm technical enough. Yeah. Like, I mean, oh, like, wow. I mean, I mean, like even, um, I, I have other women sharing stories with me and we all feel the same way. It's like when you say 
you know, when you're programming, like you, it's almost like people always want to like make validate and make sure that your your codes are good. And I'm like, do do you do that to everyone? Or oh, mm-hmm. you know, because sometimes you you also think, is it me suspecting that, or is it really um, a real thing? Right? It's 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 hard to know. So my point to you guys and and to everybody listening in is. I think one of the way to deal and, and mitigate imposter syndrome is have other people to validate that for you. Like I have mentors, I have friends, I have people that know my work. You know, when you feel like, oh my God, I I, I don't know enough or I, I don't belong here or I'm doing a terrible job. It's it's nice to have other people to say, um, are you kidding? You you know, you're doing an excellent job. Mm-hmm. You're fine. Mm-hmm. It, it It's, you know, it's important to have that checkpoint mm-hmm. you know to to say this is what the facts are and this is just in my head so it's like you need that reality you need that reality exactly that really, and i found that too um being an L and and i'm sure people will relate to this there have been times where i've been in organizations where people have no concept i'm working with the team they have no concept or understanding but they're all scrambling thinking they they know something and so mm-hmm. I'm like crazy, going crazy, going, am I going, I'm like feeling like I'm gas, being gaslighted. Am I, do I know mm-hmm. anything? Does that happen to anybody kind of within organizations, you know, where I, yeah. I need to check what in mean? with another L&D person and go, I, I, wait a minute, I, yeah. is what I'm proposing here, well, is this? Yeah. One of my favorite things is when like one of my coworkers will say, hey, I don't know how to do this. And I always appreciate that because I feel like, okay, yay, the floodgates are open. The rest of us can also, we don't know how to do it too. It's, but yeah. you know, it's, I, I actually, you know, I feel like I work with a pretty collaborative team. It's okay to ask questions. Um, you know, mm-hmm. one of my thoughts on how to mitigate part of this too is, you know, that imposter syndrome um, is to show our competency you know, to, to stand up, to be really strong mm-hmm. in who we are, our authentic selves and what our skill sets are, but then also to take that and pay it forward or pay it backward, you know, to really For be, sure. be mentors to other women, um, you know, to young women or new people, or and it doesn't have to be women. It can be men in our organization that come in that, you know, may be new, but I think just, you know, paying it forward and backward is so important to validate the great work that other people are doing. Um, well, you know, and that's part of being yeah. an authentic self. Yeah, especially when people, um, so it, it could hurt us, right? When we feel like, oh, maybe I shouldn't go for that promotion. Maybe mm-hmm. I don't, you know, I, I, I shouldn't negotiate more money. Maybe mm-hmm. I am not good enough to uh, pitch this idea. I think I think those are mm-hmm. things that are holding us back, right? And and those are things that we need people to say, no, 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 this is this is good. You mm-hmm. should you should go. Um, I mean, a student a male student actually mentioned this to me yesterday. He was showing me he's, he's building his own LMS and I was reviewing it for him. And um, he was saying, oh, um, my professor encouraged me to do this as a student pitch. And I was like, oh, no, I, I, I'm not ready. I don't know what I'm doing. And and so the, the professor actually had to sort of talk him down and say, it's only one minute. And... <laughs> and <laughs> And it said, you know, a try one. And if you don't pitch, you never know how to, you know, promote your product. And so he was like, he thought about it. And and he was like, you know what? Yeah, I can I can do that. And out of 25 student pitches, he came up top three. So I I mean, if he, if he missed that, he would never knew that what he did was of value. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of times we self-select ourself, our these opportunities. And I think that self-selection process is what we need to be mindful of. You know, it's yeah. interesting because as we're talking, I'm thinking kind of ahead and putting in a plug for our next session next month, we're going to be talking about mentorship. And that's where I think kind of mentorship yeah. comes in when you were saying kind of doing that um, reality yes. check, you know, with mentorship and having somebody you can mm-hmm. um, go to. And for I was sure. kind of thinking too, and I, I think this sometimes about, um, I'd like to hear what other people have to say kind of about our field is people come into work feeling like they're still in school. So they may come into a class feeling like they're being graded. And I feel yes. that the way the a lot of work cultures are, people come mm-hmm. in and they feel that they're being 
rated. They're being, you know, am I, I I've got to get an A, I've got to get, and there's still this Thanks. kind of school mindset when really we're not in school and really, you know, yeah. a lot of companies talk about innovation. All of mm -hmm. these things are what kills innovation. You Thanks. know, the, well, not, I, the, I, the feeling like I've got to do everything perfect. I can't try something. I can't, you know, the fears and imposter syndrome and mm -hmm, a lot of these, mm -hmm. these things. I, what are your thoughts, either of you? Um, I, yeah, I, I think um, I also wanted to, I, I'm sorry, I'm just reading the chat yeah. at the same <laughs> no, time. No, don't be sorry. Do not be well, sorry. We have, we have more questions no than the polls. No sorries here. No sorries yeah. here. I'm no, making I, a I, no sorry zone. <laughs> okay, <laughs> no. okay. Oh, that's right. We should not apologize uh, when it's yeah. not warranted. No. Um, th there was a very interesting comment uh, like a little bit earlier about uh, this this mean girl uh, uh -huh. behavior syndrome. <laughs> yeah. Mean girl syndrome. The, the high up you go, and I, I just want to comment on that quickly. Um, that I I think um, it's still true, but I think it was worse a generation before when there's only like organizations only allow one woman right on, on the top right. like for for maybe each department i don't i don't know like that the queen bee if you will um and so i think you know that woman fought really hard to get there mm -hmm. and because there's only one spot that was the mindset is that mm -hmm. i have to protect my territory mm -hmm. but i think that has changed but sometimes because that's in our minds for so long, it's really difficult to change that. And I think that it's right. worth um, taking notes for it is to understand this, this room for all of us. It, it's not like you can only have one spot that other women right. compete for. And, and, and sometimes we need to model that to make sure that like, I always, um, when I'm invited to like a talk or on a panel or, or, you know, do anything else. I always like, well, actually I know another person mm -hmm. also it's good. Can I, you know, refer her to you? Mm -hmm. And and organizers are always really happy to take referrals. So I'm or, or at work or, or anything else. I think um, the important things for us is to be others advocate mm -hmm. and not just, you know, like I, I don't like, I, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't think there's only one spot and and I don't even need to take that spot, you know, if there's only one. There's room so, for all of us and, and yeah. I think sometimes the internet too makes comparison worse. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. That's a whole other subject, you know, comparison, yeah. um, especially I have a lot of artist yeah. friends and they compare, you know, and they almost have to just yeah. block it out or that blocks out their creativity. So there's that. Um, and, I and want I, to just, I, I, oh, yeah. if I could just interrupt no, a moment because we're a little bit past the half hour and we yeah. don't have any sponsors, so we're just sponsoring this here, all of us. So I'm going to do a gratuitous plug, and I'm going to ask um, Stella to hold up her website. <laughs> there, hold it up to so Paradox <laughs> Learning. <laughs> there, no. just a gratuitous no, plug. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. And, and be sure to put your link in there and, and tell us where to find you, too, because that's, that's part of who we are in this group is to be able to share you know, our knowledge amongst our, our group, but we want to know how to find people. We want to know what each other does. That's, that's, and, and I'll just take a, a quick step back. I mean, I've been part of this group for, I don't know, about a year and a half plus. And um, when I got here, I felt like I found my home. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. I found a group of people who are um, very much like me. A lot of people work from home. People have worked in this industry. They've fallen into this industry. Um, but it was just such a, a wonderful thing when I finally found this group. Because quite frankly, I felt like I was an imposter in my own industry because there was nobody else like me. So I think, you know, maybe that's we're an echo chamber to some extent. Else but like you. See, that's a good yeah, thing. But, you know, but we, we all add those. Yeah, but we, this group is really validated too in what I am and what I do. And, you know, I think that's a really important part is to be able, you know, as part, maybe even part of the coping skills that we're looking for in what we call the imposter syndrome, whether we be men or women, is to find other people who do what we do, who can say, you know, you're really, you're doing the right practices or have you thought of this? I mean, it's really it's thought provoking. And so it's been such a value add to me to have this group, to be able to go and ask the question in the Slack channel, to be able to tell a friend about a podcast. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, found, just found, like, your, found, found your community, right? Like, found your tribe. I, think, I did. I, think I totally found my yeah. tribe here. Yeah. So, so yeah, awesome. I, think, I think that's important, too. It's to have community to support you. I think that's, like, mentors, friends, community, professional mm-hmm. practices, you know, that community. I, I, I think... Um, I think that's important and I don't just advocate for women I advocate for men I advocate mm-hmm. for 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 young professionals for for people um that are re, you know changing jobs mid career I I I, I, I I I advocate people that uh, retired and and wanted mm-hmm. to do something different mm-hmm. and and mm-hmm. go back to consulting I think I think there's opportunities for for more uh diversity of of voices, right? Mm-hmm. I, I think one thing I I struggle with is when I when I go to a lot of like technical events, these these talks or these panels are always like like five people that are technical, right? Like I, I go mm-hmm. to panels and there'll be five yes. data scientists talking about AI. And I was like, yeah, you know, that's interesting. You talk mm-hmm. about technical challenges, but AI or any tech for that matter, it's yep. it's bigger than that. It's it's about you know how language natural language processing. So you need to have a linguist to yeah, come and talk yeah. about that. Um, it it impacts society. So you need to have a sociologist and anthropologist mm-hmm. to talk about it. It impacts how we think. So mm-hmm. a psychologist should be on the table. Like even just having a diversity opinion matters. Like it, it matters on how we design tech and, and so mm-hmm. you know everybody understands it and it's an inclusive strategy as well so i, I think um mm-hmm. a, able to do that and 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 this is where the problem is people would say i'm a linguist so i don't belong in a in a technical event right right so we need to make sure that we mitigate that so they don't feel that they don't yeah. belong. Well, and I can yeah, kind of feel that same thing point. happening here in Seattle because this has become yeah. such a tech city that it's all about yeah. tech. Mm-hmm. And we have to remember, and I feel like I'm constantly fighting that, that it's about people. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, it's mm-hmm. um, we need people of all areas. Yeah. If we want to be, again, put that word out there, innovative. Mm-hmm. You need mm-hmm. different exactly. people. Exactly. And that's technology gets more complicated and it and, and it, it intersects everything in your life. You don't want just a few people to, mm-hmm. to think about how that impact us. You don't want just a few people to design that for us. You want you want all of us to to help design our future. You, you don't want just, you know, a few people making decisions for us either. No, definitely. Well, we get better together. I mean, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I think exactly. I- yeah, that's I, what I'm hoping with the group that we're starting here or continuing on because yeah. we really did start this once because uh, Kara initiated this and we're moving it forward now as women in learning and development. We don't want this to be just about women. Um, we want this to, be, you know, we want the men to join the conversation as well because, you know, yeah. the issues that affect us affect all of us. And uh, well, yeah, I, I mean, think too, it's sometimes easier. Um, somebody in the chat um, had said that they suffer from imposter syndrome. And, then, um, I was about to go there. and everybody was like, what? I can't believe it. And I One think of my it's human harder for men to yeah, say like that, women. where as women, it's easier for us sometimes to say, I feel this way, yeah. but it's harder for men. So we need to kind of support each other. I don't know. Yeah, yeah for sure. I think I think one of the um, um, symptom is that we compare ourselves to others, right? Mm-hmm. I, I think. Oh, um, that's huge. Which, which, is, which is always a terrible thing, and and you don't know what other people go through. You don't know what they the have. Right? Yeah. yeah, what the stories are. But but we, we we always do that, and 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 in fact, we should compare ourselves to ourselves. You know, like no, am I doing ourselves? <laughs> yeah, like am I doing better than I did yesterday? Correct. Like, well. That's you know, one of the big challenges, I think, is we we limit ourselves from taking step up roles sometimes because we yes. do, you know, we're we're comparing ourselves to others and saying, okay, I can't take that step up because there's somebody in that role that's doing this awesome job, and so it's kind of a, it's it's definitely affiliated with stepping up and doing the next thing. Um, I mean, I I actually have that same issue. So the person who made that comment, by the way, is one of my favorite humans, and that's Mike Simmons. Um, he's, he's a friend of mine. I don't know if I should say who's Mike is here yeah. now. He, he's, he's amazing. 
thank you, Mike, for saying that. I think that that's huge yeah, and that um, helps me. And, so and I'm coming from that. someone who I admire so much, you know, and I really do. And, you know, I, I recently took a step up role, you know, and so for me, it was like, okay, do I have the husband to do this? And I actually got a lot of encouragement from Mike. So, you know, I think that's, that's pretty cool. So that's why I say, you know, the, the, the group here is we're focused on women and learning and development, but we really need the men amongst us to, you know, help to validate, to encourage us to, to identify yes. the issues along with us. So it's really important. Um, I did want to get um, to one of the questions, by the way, if you guys, um, <laughs> go ahead, sorry, tell us. Jonathan has an interesting question. And he said, uh, yeah. does anybody secretly enjoy imposter syndrome? What, what do you guys think? <laughs> like a duper's delight? I know. <laughs> yeah. I don't think What's so. duper's delight? Is that? <laughs> That's funny. I don't know if anybody could. In... I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> We've got good alliteration there. Um, there was I, really I don't know about point. enjoying. <laughs> I, I think certainly sometimes um, I, I, I think what I can see um, it's that people use it as an excuse to stay in your comfort zone. Uh, I, I think uh, that's a that's a danger in in that. I don't know if you guys agree or or, or experience it because sometimes like it, to stand up for yourself to to put yourself out there takes a lot of courage too to exactly. to say I no no I belong I know enough I am worth it to negotiate like those things mm -hmm. take like it, it it makes you uncomfortable right and mm -hmm. and it's easy to like oh i'm not good enough so i'm not going to do this really difficult thing of um having this discussion about you know right it's getting fear. A i feel like fear yeah has to do with a lot of things anger fear mm -hmm. you know all those mm -hmm. things are like a big ball <laughs> together mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and when we were originally talking about doing this webcast, that's kind of what I was thinking of doing it on fear. And then mm -hmm. I talked to Stella and yeah. said, well, what about the imposter syndrome? But it's it's all kind of interrelated. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know? Yeah, I, I agree. I think I think it's 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 interrelated. I'm I I um I'll share my story. Um for for years, I feel like, oh my, you know, I can't I can't call myself an expert. I I don't, you know, I don't have a PhD. Uh, I, for some reason, for some silly reason for me, like getting a PhD, it's like, that's when I can call myself an expert, like, because there's like a benchmark, right? Mm -hmm. um, so so I was like, oh, maybe I don't know enough to talk, you know, to, to present my ideas and, and to publish. And, and so I would not put myself out there as much. But then when I got my PhD, I was like, oh, shit, now people think I know. <laughs> uh oh. Catch 22, it's always yes. something. Yes. So, always something, huh? <laughs> so I, I, what I want to share with you is you never feel arrived. Like, you know, that feeling of I arrive, it's it's Thank like it's, it, it's a moving target, right? So just, just you know, just do it. Like, yeah. like you're never going to, like, feel like, okay, this is where I rest, you know, this is the plateau. So you just, you know, in a way that sort of keep you going, they keep mm -hmm. pushing yourself. And, and in a way having imposter syndrome keeps you humble. So you're not this, you know, narcissistic person to say I'm the greatest, I know everything and I don't need to learn. Um, oh, somebody said, I wonder if Einstein feels that way. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I feel that some yeah. that way, especially since I kind of fired the gun and and went through this kind of transition um, in my life of, you know, I don't know enough about um, design, mm -hmm. whereas I because mm -hmm. I'm kind of part of that group of people who kind of was part of teams where other people did it. I didn't really do it. I did storyboarding, but I didn't really do mm -hmm. a lot of the technical mm -hmm. things. And so I found myself freaking out saying, what do I need to know? And I, I would get to the point where I was so anxious, I didn't know what I what I even needed to know. Um, and then I thought, you know what, this is what all I can offer right now. Because I felt like employers wanted all these things from me that I couldn't offer. Yes. That was, yes. that was crazy. Yeah. Well, somebody said, I have a PhD and I very often have imposter syndrome. Uh, Dominica said that my PhD is in a tiny topic in medicine. I think it's true. Like we, we all feel, we all feel like, oh, we only know this tiny little thing. Um, mm -hmm. Here's another interesting research on, um, you know, experts actually are not really good at assessing what we know. We just think mm -hmm. this, this is common knowledge. 
that everybody knows. But mm -hmm. in fact, what we know and not common knowledge, but because we live in that every day, we forget that people, you know, don't live in that space. Mm -hmm. And because we speak that language all the time, doesn't mean it's a language that everybody understands. So I think that's important to keep in mind. Um, the other point I wanted to make sure I share with everyone about negotiation is that there's an other piece of research about as young as five-year-old kids, there's a differences between boys and girls in understanding how much or assessing our own worth hmm. that girls at age five. So this is an experiment um, that they task little boys and little girls to like build, um, like to do a task. I think it was building Lego set. Mm -hmm. and, and to say, if you finish building this Lego set, you can reward yourself with Hershey kisses but you get to pick how many Hershey kisses you think you deserve. And consistently little boys would take more Hershey kisses than little girls. Mm. So at age five. Wow, oh, that's interesting. Huh. So even at that young age, they think little girls would consistently think, oh, I only deserve like three kisses, you know, mm -hmm. as opposed to the boys would take more. Well, it's kind so, of like um, women would feed men first and then they would eat last. And yeah, I think, I think I think same kind of and, and, and it may be co co culturally we already been conditioned at, at, at that age, right? I, I don't know if it's culture or, or, or nature, but um that study came out and, and, and it was very interesting to see it, it started so early. So how do we undo that? Oh I mean how how, how, how do we how do we change that? That's, I guess that's probably one of the questions. Well, and actually, Alex said he has four young daughters. You know, how do, how do we get past that conditioning or what, whatever it is that causes us to to raise women and and boys and men? You know, <laughs> differently. I mean, I mean, what 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 can we do? I guess even within the workplace to to you know kind of break down some of those barriers, or how can we deal with it differently as parents? I mean, my, I'm one of these people yeah. where I think allies are huge, you know, yeah. to have yes. allies. So for women to have men just within the LGBTQ community, and that's a whole other <laughs> discussion of right. not yes. feeling inclusive, you know, of having allies. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think um, so, like for negotiation tactics, for example, um, well, A, having the awareness, mm -hmm. it, you know, to, to, to know that that there is a tendency that we under negotiate. Mm -hmm. I think that's a start, right? Like so, so, so when I go in for any 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 type of negotiation, to understand that I do have a tendency to under negotiate mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. But then, secondly, I would make sure I do my homework. So let's say if I'm going in for a new project or or a, a new job um you know understand what the market you know what the market rate um understand um you know what others get paid it's not always easy it's not transparent so i think that's important to open up that that conversation mm -hmm. but there, there are a lot of information out there like um i don't know about the us but like statistic canada published you know salary um public sector organizations um uh, salary it's you know, public information. So, so there are ways, right? You can also compare it with mm -hmm. other mm -hmm. places. Um, and then I think the other piece is you have to understand, you have to do like a s assessment of what you've done, right? What value you can, you can bring in um, experiences and, and education and all that. Like you have to do a, a self-assessment too. Mm -hmm. um, so those, those three things. And, and, you, you know, obviously it helps with, you get somebody to bounce ideas and say, mm -hmm. am I crazy for asking this percentage? Or do you think that's accurate? Mm -hmm. Like a mentor or, or a peer, or like just, you know, talk to a few people, mm -hmm. you know, I, um, it out. My son gave me I, the greatest compliment as a mother. He said, mom, you raised a feminist. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was like, that's wow. That's awesome. You know, and, yeah. and that to me, I, I did my job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought, wow. Yeah. So I That's think that has really... a lot to do with it. It starts kind of there and, and it's cultural. There's so many different things that are mixed up in it. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. So Katie um, just posted on here. And I'm like, I think I'd like to take this as a quote and, and put it somewhere. She says, I think the first step is to understand that men and women are different, no matter what you do, to hold them in the same light. Very true. When a woman understands how men are different and can appreciate those differences, then she can use her strengths to an advantage. Uh, I mean, I think that's so, I mean, that's, it's very insightful, but it, she put it in a way that really makes sense. And I think that that's true, that, you know, valuing the differences between us, I think it's one of the ways that we can really start to, to kind of grow in, in who we are as women and men. You know, there, there are differences, you know, uh, there absolutely are. I mean, I know that, you know, when I speak to my husband about certain topics, he sees it in a different way. And that's, you know, how his brain processes things versus how I process it. Um, you know, I know and it, it's just so many interesting conversation here, guys. I, I wish everybody can like just speak. I know. <laughs> I know. And, and Jonathan just said we need to have each other's backs. I mean, that's yeah. it's that's absolutely distills it down to the simplest, you know, action we can take. I, have I, each other's I, 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 that, that is so yeah, true. for sure. For sure. I, I think that's why community like like this one is important, right? Like, I mean, mm -hmm. even talking about negotiation, I often crowdsource my information. Mm -hmm. I, I throw it up then to say, hey, um, you know, working on this project or like, you know, or should I bid for this thing or am I, you know, do you think I qualify? Like, I, I ask my peers, mm -hmm. you know, or, or I get other people to help me to, mm -hmm. um, you know, like sometimes... It, it's also about, you know, getting other people to to make you stronger. So, you know, sometimes I get people to work on projects with me. So then I feel like we're in it together. So it's not so scary. But then on the flip side of that, I have a story of that. I had a manager who didn't like that I kept doing that. So she didn't feel mm -hmm. that I was really showing my skill level because oh, I was no. collaborating too much. Mm -hmm. So oh, that's interesting. I know. What What's the mm -hmm. problem with that? Um, mm -hmm. I don't know, but I'm no longer there, obviously. So, I mean, <laughs> you know, you're going to encounter those kind of things. And I thought I was that's crazy, funny. but then I realized I was going, yeah. that's naturally how I work. I'm a collaborator. That, yeah. That's interesting. I, I, I've i never heard people like, oh, you collaborate too much. Well, like, she that's felt that problem. I wasn't showing her what I could do. That huh. I but you can still showcase what you can do in a in a, in a collaboration but I think projects that can come to from this kind of individualistic society that we have, even yeah. though we are kind of a cultural mix, you know, we're very individualistic in the United States. Yes. Um, you yeah. know, it's what somebody's going to do and they're, you know, going to do it by themselves. So we're not, that's something kind of new mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in some ways. So, but yeah, that was strange. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think, um, when, you know, when you touch on, on on culture, I think it's 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 hard when people move to a, a work in a, a new culture. I think that's where mm -hmm. imposter syndrome kicks in too, because um, it's 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 difficult to negotiate a culture cultural differences, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think sometimes when you like, even when you talk about collaboration, like in in some culture, that's the default. And when they when they come into a different culture where it's more individualistic and they don't want you to collaborate, it's it's like, what am I doing here? Mm -hmm. you, you know, it's difficult to kind of adjust to that. Um, I, I think immigrant serving organization to also teach imposter syndrome to uh, new immigrants just, to, yeah. just so that they know it's not them, you mm -hmm. know, and it's a temporary kind of, of, of feeling. And, and to help mitigate that. Um, yeah. But anyway, that's just a, that's a sci idea. <laughs> so I'm seeing we have almost about five minutes left. Um, yeah. So I just want to oh, kind wow. of jump in. Yeah. I know it went so fast. That's I wanted to make crazy. sure we kind of yeah. really, you know, hit on that. And you did talk. I think the most important thing is what is kind of the solution based thing you had talked mm -hmm. about, um, you know, kind of checking in with anybody. Was there anything else that you felt would be a good kind of way mm -hmm. to make that? Um, I think it's important to celebrate your own success. I think mm -hmm. little little wins, mm -hmm. celebrate it and, and get your friends to celebrate it. Get, get people to cheer you on, right? Like recognize how far you've come. I, I yeah. think that's really important. Um, and it doesn't have to be any huge thing, you know, 
the fact that you get everything done on your list today. You know, yay to that. Yeah. No kidding, huh? <laughs> because sometimes we we so focus on what we didn't get. We so focus on what we didn't accomplish. We, you know, we fail at this. We we didn't. You know, we're not doing as good at some other things. But we don't we don't focus on well. You know what? Yay for me for you know. Getting this project finished on time. Yay for right. me right. for collaborating. You know, I, I think I think that's important. I think I think we need to think more positively about about ourselves right. and and to and to you know cut some slack. Sometimes you're like, that's unrealistic expectation. Like I can't just belong way away. I'm I'm new to this country. I'm new to this project. Mm-hmm. I'm new to this. Mm-hmm. This, this learning program, I, I can't dive in and process things 100% today. You know, and that's okay. And that's like, you know, this word multitasker. Mm-hmm. We are not yes. multitaskers. That's just not in the, you know, we can't possibly do all those things and do it well. So, right. Mm-hmm. That up, you know? Exactly. I, yeah. I think it's, it's um, I think our culture you know, sometimes set re- unrealistic expectations on us. Right. Like multitasking is one, um, working long hours, um, mm-hmm. replying mm-hmm. emails after hours, mm-hmm. constantly be on. Like, mm-hmm. you know, people text you and you don't reply right away. They're like, are you okay? You know, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just, yeah. you know, having dinner. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah. I know what a concept, huh? Right. Well, thank you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much for for pointing out too. We should take those little wins too. And you know, even when they're kind of almost private. I mean, I said to my husband the other day, I said, I think I did a good thing today. And I'm thinking, here I am, self validating. But I had somebody email me saying that they were trying to get training for an AED AED device, you know, for life saving. And this poor guy didn't know who to ask in finance. And you know, I'm still fairly new. I had no idea. So I ran it down. Um, I found the right person. I sent an email and he sent me one back and he said, just letting you know that we were able to fund the AED training for this particular group. And I thought, awesome. That's a win. This is not yeah. in my area. But, you know, I felt like, okay, just something good. Yeah. To yeah, because yeah. We're, afraid to, we're afraid, you know, am I going to be too egotistical or is this going to sound yeah. arrogant? Because I'm. that's a good thing, you know, um, take that recognition. And, yeah. you know, I would like to recognize everybody here who, Woke up so early, at least in uh, <laughs> West Coast. In, you know, West Coast. Early, I know. I got up early and recognize everybody who's been here today. You know, um, even though I don't know each one of you, I'm sure everybody is doing their very best. Yeah. You know? Well, and and also like celebrate other people's success. Absolutely. Right? Just just to um yeah cheer them on and 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 to say it's okay we we all feel that way sometimes like you know and when you feel imposter syndrome you're like it's okay to feel that way as long as you keep it in check right exactly. it's like you know feeling fear but just don't let that hold you back and don't let that prevent you from putting yourself out Excellent. there and, and doing things that right. you want to do uh, somebody asked about a Slack channel, Our so Slack you might channel. want to put it up. Yeah, so yeah. Brent posted it once I, earlier, and if, if somebody can post it back up again. Our Slack channel is such an important, like, 24-7 conversation continuation of what we do in the cast. Um, so, And somebody referred to our cast day as a narrow cast, which I love that term. And oh. So, yeah, so we definitely, please continue this conversation in a second. Brent, thank you. Awesome. Okay, Brent, I know. I, I love to uh, I love to join in as well. Yeah, I think yeah, that's yes, fantastic. Definitely. We're, we're, I'd love to hear um everybody's stories. So yeah. please share them and um I, I continue to share my yeah. as well. So I think that's uh so where's the best place to find and, both of you ladies? So where can we find you? Well hopefully in our Slack channel because I know Valerie's there and so it's a local coffee there. shop. I'm getting teriyaki. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm, but I'm, I'm jealous because Seattle has great coffee. Colorado Springs has great coffee, but Seattle has great coffee. So I guess yeah. we, we're and here I am drinking that, Starbucks. But... I mean, all right, I even, you know, that's drinking <laughs> my own brew. Uh, the best um, place I, in, I, I, oh, the best I'm place pretty, to find I'm, me is LinkedIn. Yeah. Really, I okay. am very um, involved in LinkedIn, and I love LinkedIn. Yeah. I've you, you are. Great communities. It, it's great. 
Yeah. Okay. No, so Valerie is uh, also LinkedIn. Valerie, okay. it's great. She's talking about being an advocate and a and a supportive peer. I oh, love that. You, you know, oh. it's 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 so wonderful oh, uh, to have you in my community. So um, and so I look here. forward to uh, to having yeah. you and the rest of the people here on my community as well. So um, that's where. Yeah, most of the interesting conversations happen as well. And what about so, you, yeah. Patty? Where can yeah. we find you? Yeah. So yeah. I'm primarily on LinkedIn as well. Um, I call LinkedIn my best tool. So I just wanted to thank you both <laughs> for being here today. I'm so excited to move this yeah. concept forward. Um, and so, you know, everybody stay tuned yeah. to hear more about women in L&D, which is W-I-L-D, wild. Um, wild. And thank you all so much for joining us today. So I'll go ahead and shut everybody's window down. All okay, right. thank you, everybody. Have a thank good day. Have a great rest of the day, okay? Bye, Bye. now. Bye.